Next, I'm going to begin to um, define the, uh, the hills by making the closer hills um, a, little, a little bit darker. And the, the blue, I'm just going to start out with a little bit of the peacock blue. Um, it's going to be really quite light, and I suspect I'll be adjusting things a decent amount. But that's okay. So I'm going to... Um, I'm going to address every mountain, hill, and thing down this way, except for this, the farthest hill here. I'm going to make it still quite light blue. It's going to be a little bit darker than what's going on there, but that's obviously not that dark, so it won't take a whole lot. I, um, I'm going to... Uh, not use the hockey brush this time just so you know you sort of have the option especially if um, especially if you're painting something where the uh, where the edges are taped and you can really just bring this brush across pretty quickly and not worry too much about stopping and starting and stopping and starting um, you can cover quite a bit of ground with just a regular old round brush that you have um, a lot of a lot of paint mixed up with a lot. And hopefully you can tell that this is a lot more than when I was doing it with the uh, the hockey brush. because um, <clears throat> the hockey brush <clears throat> that already had a bunch of, made it so there was already a bunch of water there. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that was creating kind of theoretically a, a wet on wet. And technically what this is, is, um, is uh, wet on dry. Um, those are those terms are, are have been around forever. I sort of um, don't think they have as much. They're not qu quite as useful to me as I think they are to some folks. But I'm going to give this a go just to um, to see what happens in trying to do a, a big shape with just my round brush. I'm still going to um, I'm going to come in not try to do exactly the uh, to the line on that first pass heck maybe even the second pass I do want to make sure I don't let that line of paint just sort of sit there for too long or else it will um, create a slight stain Let's see, how about that? And this is when... I just have a bunch of paint mixed. Going one direction, going back, getting a little more paint. <laughs> it's all spilling down this, this side. better to have it a little bit too wet and to spill to have a safe place for it to um, to flow and spill into than to not have it wet enough and then start pressing your brush more into the paper to try to squeeze out a little bit more paint at which point you can um, start scrubbing the lower layers which sometimes is what you want, but right now is not what I want. It 
This is going to sound weird, but um, that seems really easy to me. But I know, I can clearly remember watching people do that, trying it myself, and thinking, what? <laughs> that doesn't work at all. A couple things to think about if you are really struggling with that is to make sure that you practice doing it a lot. Um, but making sure that you have plenty, a, a good enough brush that holds a lot of water and and using it in a way where it's getting as much water as you can. I usually try to make sure that I get, when I dip it in, I'm sort of, one of my students pointed out, I sort of, I'm flattening it out, my brush, to soak up as much as I can. I'm gonna bring it even a little bit more. So you need a brush that will hold a lot of water and then you need to make sure that you indeed get a lot of water into that brush and brush it gently in one direction until there's so much paint and water on the paper that we have that that beading beading line of pooling watery color anyways Try that.